What's going on YouTube? Today, I'm showing you how to change oil in your Volkswagen Atlas. This particular model is a 2021 Volkswagen Atlas Crossport. It has the 3.6 liter V6 engine in it. However, this should be applicable to any V6 Atlas had from 2018 to current. We're gonna start off with an overview of the tools and items you're gonna need to complete this job. And then later at the end of the video, we'll go over how to reset that maintenance light that keeps popping up on your dash. If you're here just to figure out how to reset that light, put a little time up here, you can fast forward to there. Let's quickly review some items you're gonna to need to perform this oil change. First, you're gonna need 5.8 quarts of oil. The manual calls for 0W30. I chose to go with Mobile One Synthetic. Also, going with a Wix filter this time, model number 57462, as well as a funnel to pour the oil in. To get the skid plate off, you're gonna need two Torx bits, a T25 and a T45. Get the oil drain bolt out, you're going to need an 18mm socket or wrench. To get the oil filter housing off, you're going to need a 36mm socket, as well as an optional torque wrench when you go to put it back on. Additionally, you're going to need an oil drain bucket. And to lift the car up, I chose to go with two floor jacks as well as two safety stands. Okay, so our very first step is going to be from inside the car. What we're going to want to do is turn the ignition on and then engage the parking brake. The reason for this is we're going to be lifting the front end of this car up to change the oil. What we don't want to happen is the car to roll front or back. It's just a safety precaution. Let's turn our ignition on. And then pull up on the parking brake. Now our parking brake is engaged. All right, the next step is going to be to locate the lift points for the front end of this car. It's about a foot back from the front tire. You'll see it build up a little bit. That's where you're going to want to place your floor jack and start to lift up the front end of the car. We're just going to jack up a little bit on each side till we get the proper height that we want. Now to lift the passenger side. All right, for safety, I'm going to take one of my jack stands and place it right next to my floor jack. That way if it would fail for any reason, at least there's something to protect me. So go ahead and pop your hood, and then we're gonna locate our oil fill cap. We're just gonna twist that off and set it to the side. Now, from underneath the car, we're gonna go ahead and remove our skid plate. Reason for this, so we can gain access to our oil drain plug. If you wanna call this the most annoying part, I do. The reason for it is there's 14 different screws holding this on. There's a total of 11 T25s that hold it on, and then three T45s. The most annoying one to take off is this T25. It's at the very front and center of the car. Uh, if you have an extension and a swivel bit um, to attach to your bit, it makes it a little easier. Uh, I'm sure they have a better tool for this. You have to let me know, but uh, just using what I have to make do. All right, now that we have all 14 screws out, we're just gonna wiggle it loose, drop it down, and just kinda push it to the side. Using our 18 millimeter socket, we are going to loosen off the oil drain bolt. And drain the oil out. One thing to note, that's a lot easier if you make sure your crush washer is coming with you. Uh, rather than getting stuck there, it ends up falling into the oil if not. While the oil drains out, we're going to clean off our oil drain plug and just set it to the side. While we're letting the oil drain out, we're gonna take our 36 millimeter socket and loosen off the cap to the oil filter housing. On this oil filter housing, if you want to, you can remove the little Allen bit here to drain the oil out of the housing first. Sometimes I wonder if it's worth the hassle or not. Uh, it does tend to get a little bit messier. Gonna take a rag and clean up the threads on the oil filter housing. So now we're gonna replace the oil filter with the new one we've purchased. This just clips inside the housing. You just gotta wiggle it loose. And we'll set that to the side. The old oil filter out of the car was STP brand. Picked that up from AutoZone. This new one is a Wix filter. 
It was a recommendation I got out of the beetle oil change video, so we're gonna give that a try. If you have one that you prefer, go ahead and leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you had luck with in the past. Basically, the same way we took this filter out, it's gonna go back in, take this end, and just apply a little pressure and it snaps together, just like that. Inside your filter box should receive one new O-ring. That's gonna be to go around the filter cap right here. So we're gonna remove the old one. Keep note of which groove it's in. Uh, this one I can tell it's the second one from the bottom. Just gonna use a flathead screwdriver. Work that loose. All right, old one off. Get the new one out. Now to put the new one on, little recommendation, take a little bit of the motor oil and rub it on this O-ring. There's also a small one on the end of this filter. We're gonna to want to do the same, just kind of lube it up a little bit. We're gonna make sure we put it back in that same groove we found the other one in. Nice, now it's ready to go back into the car. All right, just gonna screw the filter back in. Just gonna go finger tight and then we'll torque it down. The torque specs for this filter cap are actually labeled right on the edge here. It's 25 Newton meters. We're gonna use our torque wrench and torque it to spec. Nice. Now that all the oil has drained out of the car, we're gonna put our oil drain plug back in. Using a ratchet, just gonna get this snug enough. Make sure you don't wanna over tighten that. Now you definitely don't wanna strip out those threads. At this point, all the work beneath the car is complete. We're gonna reattach our skid plate. As you go to install all 14 of these screws back in, I recommend just going finger tight for all of them uh, until they're all lined up, and then go back through and tighten each one down. At this point, all of our work is complete beneath the car, so we're just gonna remove the jack stand. And we'll return the car back to a level surface. Now it's time to add oil to the car. Got my funnel installed. This particular bottle is the V6 3.6 liter. It calls for 5.8 quarts of 0W30 synthetic oil. And we're gonna go ahead and add that now. Remember not to overfill the car with oil. Uh, it's a lot easier to add oil than it is to take away at this point. I've got around 5.7 to 5.8 quarts of oil in the car. I'm gonna reinstall the cap. I'm gonna start the car to run the oil through the oil filter housing, and then we'll check our level. Let the car run for about 20 or 30 seconds. And then we'll remove our dipstick, and check for level. Clean it off. All right, a little low. We're gonna add a little bit more. Check our dipstick one more time. Got oil about halfway through the hash marks there. That's perfect. We are good to go. Now that we completed our oil change on the Atlas, it's time to get rid of that pesky little oil light that pops up every time you start or stop your car. So what you're gonna wanna do is scroll through the menus. We're gonna go over to driving data. We're gonna click the up and down until we highlight range and then we're gonna hold in the OK button. Hold in for about five seconds, and then let go. Now you're gonna get a service menu pop up, and we're gonna scroll down to reset oil change service. 
reset oil change service, we're going to click OK. The service interval was reset. Now we're going to go down to reset inspection service and clear that as well. Hit OK. Then we'll continue to scroll down and hit close. That's it. Reset. Well, guys, that's going to wrap up today's video. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, a few of you found this helpful. If you did, do me a favor. Go ahead and smash the thumbs up button. Really appreciate that. If you want to leave a comment on some tips or tricks for myself or others that are going to do this in the future, go ahead and do so, and uh, have a good one.